D. Smith was the first person that gave me a compliment. You just said a word, and I let you slide with it, but I want to know. Because I didn't, I ain't like you. <laughs> two, two black guys about to fight, oh no. <laughs> and then even in the past fairs, oh, you can't call that. You got to call something. I'm asking you, you think he's better than you, say it. it like, was, it I was, totally that, respect that. That was my spot. That should come with time. That's yes. respectable. There's no doubt. She won't watch. Keep it. Cut to it. Let's get down to it. Cut to it. Cut to it. Cut to it. Let's get down to it. Appreciate you coming on the pod. Thank you for having me. Man, I'd like to introduce, uh, we got Roman Harper. I don't know what necessarily what to call you because we were uh, enemies. Yes. Uh, then you became on the Panthers, but I was in Baltimore. Correct. So that would be a friend of me. It's correct. And then now we're friends, but people think we probably, you know, still hate <laughs> each other. But we'll, we'll get into that, man. Appreciate and you. I, I definitely think we lean into that as much as we yeah. can, especially around other people that don't know us. Know, uh, relationship. Yeah. Is this? Oh, two, eight, two, two black guys about to fight. Oh, no. <laughs> What are we doing? I know one of them's packing. Uh, <laughs> uh, I hope not. But anyways, <laughs> I hope not. But uh, no, man, it's good, man. Yeah. Thanks for having me, man. I would call us uh, really good friends. I, I enjoy your mindset, who you are as a person now that I know you. Yeah. You know, I, and I've told you this before. Look, you, Steve Smith was the first person that gave me a compliment my rookie year uh, that I actually took to heart. And was I did? Like, yes. What did I say? So you just said, man, you're going to be a good player, dog. I like your game. You like watching me. This is my rookie year. We, Saints came to Carolina. I tore my ACL like the fifth game. So okay. like I was done early. But mm. I covered you in the back line of the end zone. You did, you know, like a sp uh, spin dig. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I just covered you in the back end zone. And I just covered you well. And you were like, hey, you're going to be a good player, dog. Like I see you there. Yeah. I'm like, I appreciate it. It meant a lot. Because I, I remember you on the Super Bowl run. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, my first jersey was a Carolina Panthers jersey. Who was it? Tim Bianca Batuku. That's a good jersey. I like I, I like uh, Bianca. We call him Tamanga though. Really? His, yeah. So I didn't. I his, just knew him from Colorado. His, his yeah, real cool. name. His, yeah. His, his, uh, he still lives in his area. Yes, he does. That's crazy. I Great mean, dude. so many players. So many players from all all walks of teams. They they stay here yeah. in this area. I mean, I'm here. Yeah. You of course you're here, but I mean, your whole fam's done been raised yeah. here. But yeah, yeah, man, just being a fan, man. I you yeah. know now I get to. Had this relationship. I mean, we can. I would love to just peel back. You want to peel back at all? Yeah, we're gonna we 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 <laughs> we're gonna peel back some some layers and, and and go deep, man. But one, let's let's start off with some icebreakers, right? You okay. Know? You, you know, I gotta be light skinned And listen, people, when I say light skinned I'm not talking about. This is not about race. It has to do with <clears throat> in a black community. There's two shades of folks, and in those two shades of folks, there's light skinned like me, and light skinned I say light skinned tendencies where. Uh, Light-skinned folks, uh, we judge. Uh, we think we're better. Uh, we we conduct ourselves in a manner that uh, you know, like lotion takes to our to our uh, uh, absorbs in our skin a little bit better than dark skin folks, right? Not it's, with me. I lotion yeah. all the time. Now, uh, unfortunately, um, he's not here to defend himself, but it doesn't matter. T TD does not. The lotion does not absorb in his body as well as it should. Am I lying? He's not lying. Yeah. He'll take a whole <laughs> bottle of Jergens. <clears throat> I judge you because you know when I judge. Go ahead, because I yeah. want you to finish your point. Because Jer Jergens, I don't think he's wrong about this. Look, like, Jergens, a uh, coconut, a uh, cocoa butter. Yeah, uh, and then just good old fashioned Vaseline and baby oil. He still look like he made all the biscuits in the back of the boat. Bag. <laughs> I've seen cats real ashy. I judge him <laughs> if they feed his ashy. If your feet are ashy or your hands are ashy, bro, I'm judging the shit out of you. Okay. Straight up. So I'm with mm -hmm. you. All right. And I think you're right about it. Okay. I mean, we love I you, think, TD. Yeah, we do love you. But here's that what I do. Me. I now text him when I say, hey, Hansel. He doesn't know what to do. <laughs> he thinks I'm joking. But I, I just, so, all right, here we go. Here we He's, go. All right. So. We love TD. Have you ever gotten a gift that you didn't like? What do you say when you receive that gift? First of all, I'm always thankful for it. Mm. Um, I'm never, you know, so I wouldn't say I didn't like it as much as I would say, maybe I didn't appreciate it. All right. <laughs> Words matter, Smitty. I, Words matter. Oh, I, I know. <laughs> all right? Oh, yeah. I'm very aware. <laughs> so I wasn't always appreciative maybe of some gifts. And so I, I just, I don't use it. I just. Oh, you pay. 
You regifted? I mean, I don't get. I mean, if it's free, is it really regifting? Like, like if I'm not giving, I'm like just giving. I'm just passing along. Hmm. Okay. I good, would I would say to... not give it away. I would say I'm passing it along. Oh, okay. You paying it forward? That's it. All right. Wording matters. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> if you could write your own law that everyone, everyone had to follow. This is a good question. I like I know. where this is starting. I appreciate it. I can what? tell you do TV. Oh, thank you. What would it be? If you could pass your own law that everyone had to follow, what would it be? Um. So this is what I would I would love because I, I feel like I end up following my, finding myself driving a lot because I like to drive and so sometimes long road trips. I would say this. I would raise the speed limit everywhere mm. to at least 75. It's 70 right now. Some places in South Carolina, it's like 60. Yeah. There's some places in yeah. Charlotte, it's like 40. Yeah. Oh. So all interstates. Okay. I want all interstates minimum 75 mm. or 80. Okay. okay. And then I want to also, within that law, a bylaw is going to be, if you're driving freaking slow, get to the right. Mm. I'm so tired. You know, that's not slow. a law. They actually, that's not a new law. They already have it. Yeah, but like, I need people, I need this like in action. I need oh, this okay. done. Like, okay. I don't want it just to be a law that nobody, you said that they have to follow. Yeah. Yeah, I want people getting out the oh. way. I'm okay. just tired. So it's, of, you don't want like a citizen's arrest. You want an actual ri- <laughs> something, something yes. for substance. Yes. I okay. want this is not only law, but executed. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Executing or execute? Execute. I okay. want you moving to the right. All right. So we're not killing them. No, no, no. <laughs> okay. Just get them in the right lane. All right. The All last right. one. If you had to move your entire family to a new country, where would you pick up and go? Man, I, off the top of my head, I do not know. Mm. Um, That's tragic. That is tragic. Immediately, I would say or want to think, like, is it, now, why are we moving and running? Like, <laughs> no, you're we, not running. You're not, n- nothing, nothing like in danger desk, or nothing. Nothing. It just, like, just so let me, so choice, let me tell just, you, my, my, my fantasy place that I would love to move to. Okay. Just pick up and go. 12, 12 months, we stuck there, Costa Rica. So we're going to go for 12 months. Yeah. I want to go. And as you think about it, I, I walk through mine. So I like Costa Rica. Um, I love the beach. I love a beach yep. that actually has waves. I don't think you are a beach. That's if the I, West Coast thing. Yeah. But I also don't think you're a beach. If I'm, If I take a nap. And it is like 20 yards the other way. What do you mean it's 20 Like, haven't you been, you've been to the beaches here. Yeah. Like, if you take a nap, like the tide rises and lowers, like, there's a whole new, like, there's a whole new, like. I, everything's different. Ev- the whole, the sand, like, everything's different. We got like 30 new yards of, of sand that just appear. Like, I took a nap. When I first went to a beach out here, I took a nap with one of my kids. This right? is so funny. This took, is, I took so a nap funny. with the with the with one of the little ones. Man, woke up damn beaches way over there. I what what Do, just gone. <laughs> All right. So, so so for me, Costa Rica, I like it. So has you like waves. the beach. So yes. that beach is good waves for you. Oh yeah. And you the beach surf. doesn't disappear. About, no, Stuff it doesn't seems disappear. The same. It doesn't appear or disappear. All it's right. like it stays this it's consistent. Okay. So consistent waves. Anything yeah. else? What else about Costa Rica makes you go there? I mean, uh, you're going to be there 12 years, so yeah. you obviously like 12 it. 12 months. 12 months, sorry. Uh, you I'm, obviously like it for your family, yes. the, the whole it's, feel of so it. So our summer is their winter. It's kind of rainy, but what I really enjoy about it, uh, it's like kind of like Mexico. Okay. But it's uh, significantly safer. Yeah. Um when we first went the first time, man, and you know, I got a big family, so it's four kids, me and my wife, so six yeah. of them. At the time, we didn't have do so uh, Bam was still young. I don't know if Bam was alive. Yeah, Bam was like three or four. Yeah. So the other ones. Um, and the cool part, for a family of six, we went out, bro, and it was like 
twenty dollars. Oh, yes, love it. Right. It was like just you know just eating. Yeah. The authentic food, right? Little mom and pop, you know, before we came became real organic and making yeah. you know pay attention to what we put in our bodies, man. Just go out there and spend twenty five bucks on a family of at a time five and get authentic uh, food, man. I I do enjoy I do enjoy that part. Man, that's beautiful. So my wife and I always talk about that. She's a big like traveler. She just wants to like go. Yeah, go mm -hmm. and just live. You met her. She's mm -hmm. and uh and you know, so she tries to push us to do stuff like that more and more. Are you closed minded about that? No, I don't I don't I would not say I'm closed minded. I think I would say I was I didn't think that that's what I would like to experience in life. Why? Well, I don't know. Just growing up in Alabama, you kind of just grew up how you grew up. I mean, I I haven't even been to all 50 states. And so You haven't? No, I have not. Okay, okay. So so because of those things, I'm like 20? Oh, yeah, I've been at least 20. Okay. Yeah, yeah. At it's least just, 32. Yeah, it, it's just some of like Wyoming, yeah. you know, uh some of the you Idaho. Play that, you played at Alabama, so you didn't go to Wyoming. Yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah. and nope. I mean, I went so. to school at Alabama. So because of that, you know, we've been to Australia. We've okay. been to, um, you know, uh, London. We've been to all these other places. One place that I've not gone, and that's why I was, before you even said Costa Rica, it really takes me to where I would say is, initially I would think is, all right, somewhere in South America is where mm. I would want to go and live for 12 months. My wife and I always said, you know, we would love to go and stay a summer for a month or two months every Ooh. year and take the kids. And it's just, you just become more cultured. You yeah, see more, yeah, di yeah. you see yeah. different things. It does open your eyes. And when you go these places, it makes you want to see more. Yeah, like does. after I went to Australia or after I've been to London, I always thought like, man, that's so cool yep. to, to go over there, to visit, to see a whole different walk of life, especially Australia. You know, like yep. when I flew back, I literally had the same flight at the same time on the same day from one from Sydney, Australia to Los Angeles, California, and mm -hmm. then from Los Angeles, California to Charlotte, North yep. Carolina, same day. Yep. You, know you, I mean? you went forward in time and then you went back in time. Yes. And the day never changed. Never changed. Yeah, that's pretty You know, cool. and over there, they're watching Monday Night Football and it's Tuesday afternoon. That's yep. like what they do. Yeah. So it's, it's a little different, but yeah, it's great to see it though. Yeah. All right, so let's just jump into it. You know. Uh, where are you from and the place you call your hometown? Uh, I am from Prattville, Alabama. I don't know if you've ever asked me that. I said, man, it's deep. All right. Yeah. Deep. That's how I'm <laughs> uh, No, I'm from Prattville, Alabama, man. Prattville. It's, uh, yeah, what, man. I, it's right outside Montgomery, okay. the capital. And uh, so very. I'm central Alabama. I'm literally, I would say, like two and a half hours to every corner. Okay. And so There's the beaches like, that you don't like, yeah. I went there a lot growing up. Now, I know Alabama has a... I heard they have a huge uh, beach yeah, yeah, yeah. springtime. Yeah, like I see the commercials and I and Orange Beach. I didn't realize yeah. they had a Dolphin Island, and it's all down right by the 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 Panhandle. You go all the way down to the coast. You got Biloxi, Mississippi, that people yeah. go over to. I mean, it's crazy. Spring break is like, bro. Everybody comes through where I'm from. Really, on the way down to spring break. Yeah, from Nashville, all 65 and 85 all merged. Well, they all drive through Alabama oh, oh, okay. to get to the bottom. Okay, I, I, because my I know I know you don't know. I, I, I'm not trying to be funny. I'm like <laughs> no, really <laughs> like oh okay. Uh, yeah, bro. So that's what uh, I grew up there. Uh, played high school ball there. Like my dad was a coach. Hmm. Did he uh, coach you? He coached me early. So after what that was my ninth grade year and my tenth grade year in high school, my dad was my DB coach, hmm. and he was always a defensive back and DB coach and did all that so um so, so is that the reason like you play db you kind of felt you were trained up and kind of you were more familiar with with that or well, did it just you know smitty actually looking back i mean it kind of just kind of fit in it was a way i could play early mm -hmm. it was like you know they needed some help and and defensive back i could play it i've always been able to run and cover and mm -hmm. play ball i wasn't a great wide receiver because i i couldn't see the ball that well this was before my LASIK, you know what I'm saying? Oh, wow, okay. Yeah, yeah. So uh, my brother was a really good uh, wide receiver, though. Like, he had so how many, how many brother, I mean, brothers brothers and sisters do you have? So I had three older brothers. One passed away. Okay, I'm sorry. And, I, and it's all good. Thank you so much. And then, so now I got two older brothers. Names? Uh, Brian. Okay. He's the oldest one. He's kind of crazy. He's the one that people would notice. So he dressed up during games and stuff. Like, 
he's wearing like a Batman costume. Oh, okay. He's like, you know, yeah. he's wearing a big sombrero with that New Orleans Saints games. Oh, okay. He's like all in. He's, oh, like he's, he's all in. Super yeah. all in. You could have played pickleball. He'd be in a pickleball outfit. Bro, this is like what he does. Like yeah. he used to have us in the backyard with pads on. You know what I mean? So, oh, so he's the yeah, serious. He's the, here. So he's the reason why I would say I play football. It's he's not drawn my up to play. Oh, man, yeah, we had plays in the backyard. We yeah. run the you know thirty two veer. Oh, okay. Like, we're doing all this stuff. My brother was a quarterback. I'm usually a running back. I knew I was a little thrown off, but that I like football is my first love. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But I knew I was a little thrown off when I tried to go over the line one time. Like it was going Walter Payton. Mm. The ball was gonna go over the top. So when did you realize uh, that but was there was no day? line? This was just in the backyard versus my older brother. Oh yeah, and he just buried me. But oh, and he buried he you. Did. He. <laughs> but it's all good though. Man. It's all good. <laughs> so you dove <laughs> over the imaginary line. Yeah, man, I was. And committed. he let you know that his imaginary <laughs> line opened it up yeah it so it's back here. on back it wasn't going here and you lost yeah i lost yeah yeah but it's all good though i was the youngest and then it I couldn't also have been all a... good you were hurting huh <laughs> <laughs> were you <laughs> it probably did hurt. <laughs> looking back on it it probably hurt yeah 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 but uh did you cry i don't know man back then i probably would cry but yeah. I, i'll go inside but we'd always go back out yeah you know what i'm saying back you was then, hot though wasn't yeah you? i was probably mad but i like i never won i was yeah. the youngest so oh. i never I never won. So it was all good. I got used to it. It yeah. was just what it was. It was life. So, what, you know, tell me, what did you experience growing up in Plattsville? Prattville. Prattville. Yeah. Alabama. So I would say 65, 35, white to black. Pretty mm-hmm. much everybody went to public school. Uh, it's like, a, you know, it's defined as like the preferred community of Montgomery. You know what I mean? The capital. So mm-hmm. people that. I've you know, been in Montgomery, Yeah. Alabama. So my mom worked in Montgomery. Okay. My dad was in Prattville at the high school. I'm something. not trying to say this as a derogatory comment, but I have to say it this way. I went to Montgomery, Alabama, and I went back in town. Yeah, for sure. I could like, see that. Like, I, I stayed downtown. Oh, yeah? When was this? This was probably, I don't know, I was still playing. So it was probably about, say, probably about 10 years ago. Okay, yeah. Right? Stayed in the, the nice hotel. There was a Jimmy John's, the, the state they- built. State building was right there, right around the corner from that was Chick Fil A, mm-hmm. and I just remember walking around there because I did a football camp at the at the uh, on the on the okay. Army base in Montgomery. Oh, which one at Gunner Air Force Base or Maxwell? Maxwell. Yeah, my dad worked up there. And so I I used to do football camps uh-huh. at all these different military bases, and Montgomery came up, and we stayed in town, and uh, it was interesting, man. I yeah. I was really like. Right now, I have to say this too. I went to. I don't think that's derogatory at all. Yeah, well, you know, some people. Oh, how you? But I, I went back in time. I was like, I'm from there, so like I know. Yeah, what but you, you know, mean. some people that are from places they like get easily offended. Like, yeah. no, it's not like that. I was like, bro, I was there. I, I, it's because I've traveled. This, I experienced that. What, yeah, I experienced <laughs> life, and I know what you mean when you yeah. say that. Exactly what it is. Well, I'll tell you another place that's very similar to that, Provo, Utah. When University of Utah played BYU, uh, when Zach Wilson actually, well, I think it was in his junior year, we went out there and played, uh, Utah did, and we stayed at the hotel with the team, and I, I, I was, I went back in time. Yeah. Like, I was like, wow. <laughs> it, it was, they had a, um, this is how you know you're back in time. They had a general store. Yeah, like a General Mills. You know, it said general store. <laughs> well, so maybe they try and keep it more like home name. Yeah, so then okay. like they don't let the big yeah. people come, big boys come in. Yeah. Cause you know, like in my hometown, I remember like it was yesterday when we when we got a Walmart, like a super Walmart. Mm. It was a huge deal that Walmart had come to Prattville. Mm. And so, I mean, then nobody really started going to Kmart anymore. Then everybody, then we got a big movie theater. Now my hometown's pretty decent size. You know, it's when I was in school, there was what, 15, 1600. Now it's over 2000 something oh, okay. kids. Wow. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so but it's still, it's just a little bit more mixed up, man. But, you know, it was different though, uh, growing up in, in Prattville, but I would say very much so like safe, like great, great, easy community. Like, and I stayed on the other side of the tracks. Like both of my parents are college educated. Um, not saying I like we were 
like good, but like we were definitely, what I saw, I would definitely say lower middle class. So, mm. and you know, knowing where my wife is from and seeing her walk of life. Where's your you know, wife from? She is from, um, mm. she's from kind of all over, but she was born in California. She was raised on an uh, Indian reservation in South Dakota. Wow. Yeah, the Rosebud in Mission, South Dakota. Mm. So uh, the, the, that's the name of the reservation's Rosebud. But anyway, so going up there over the years and seeing like where she's from mm. compared to like where I'm from, and I'm just like- That's unique. It's, it's man, it's so unique. And like, it's really hard to put it into words or describe it until you go there. And I, I tell everybody like the biggest shock for me was when I got there. Cause I like, how can I complain about anything that I was raised with? Mm. when I've seen so much worse in our own country. And yeah. so, and I saw it in my wife's family and how it affects them. And, and uh, when mm. I came back from there the first time, cause we go every year for the powwow. And so when I came back the first time, Smitty, I was literally like, I had never seen so many kids with kids. Make sense? I mean, it does. Yeah, my, you know what I'm saying? I mean, my mom was 17 when she had, uh, my mom was 17 when she right. had me, so. Right, you yeah. know what I mean? And my mom was 16 when she had my oldest brother. Mm. So my mom was young too, but you know, she grew up in such a big family, they were able to help and support her, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And help her get through that and allow her to go off to school as well while they so looked after my brother. Let's, let's I really want to kind of talk about your wife and, and, and yeah. your experience because, you know, I, I've met you guys, but uh, that has never- It's never come up. It's never come up. <laughs> yeah. And I think that's unique because I think, you know, everybody that has their life experiences, like whatever you go through in life, man, it, it shapes your emotion, informs your perspective yeah. on the world. Yeah, for sure. And people don't like to admit it. You know, however you have been exposed or you have been. That's a great statement, though. It's Thank so you. true. So true. Thank you. Very true. And so I want to know, like, based off first, you just said a word and I let you slide with it. But I want to know what is a powwow? Because. I've never yeah. been, so I, I, I'm, I'm really interested because you've gotten to see something unique it that not, so a, unique. not a, everybody can see. We, <laughs> we see. we hear versions of other people's versions of their unknown experience of yeah. Native American, African American, African heritage, all, yeah. the, different, all the different walks of, of life and different heritages, but you get their perspective of their experience with with very little point of view or reference. Yeah. I don't have that reference, but neither do you until now you are yeah, I've been three times. Okay, three times, <laughs> right? So I yeah. think that that's great. What what is a powwow? All right, so it's like their anniversary uh of when they like come together there once a year. So okay. it was on like the hundred and like forty something powwow. And the powwow, like is, everybody that's associated with the So their whole tribe comes together. The whole tribe. So how many people was that? Thousands. Really? Yeah, yeah. So they all come together. But now it's a lot of uh, white people as well uh, from like Nebraska because it's right on close to the line. So like people from Nebraska come in, like people from all over South Dakota will come in to the big powwow because it's such a big attraction. Like we normally get like a, we'll rent like an RV and we'll just go stay out there. No way. Yeah, we do that. And uh, as a family. And so we go and we're at the powwow and so they have different dances every night. They have different celebrations. They have different competitions. They have like a, they have like where they do, um, they have softball at night. They have big softball tournaments. They also have, um, they have like this uh, mud racing. Like, dude, they got there with cars, bro. That just normal street cars. And they call them res cars. They're just beat up. They're kind of dirty sometimes. Mm. And they're rolling through. And then sometimes they're doing like this little mud, mud riding thing where they're trying to jump hills and all this other thing. My favorite thing is when they go into the, uh, they're doing all the, the cow, no, the horse racing and mm -hmm. the, they do some barrel racing. But the funniest thing ever, the best is they, this, uh, they, I don't know what the name of the exact competition is, okay. but it's three people. So they release three horses. It's three different groups and you can bet on the, the people too. Like they got mm -hmm. people walk around. If you want to take a bet, you can do that. Only cash. Come on, dog. No Venmo? There's no Venmo. Bro. No, no cash not, out? Uh, none of that. Okay. All right. It may be now, though. <laughs> it is 2023. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not going to say it. it's not like, <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? You know, somebody, you, you always got that family member. Somebody always short cash, but want to yeah, get involved. Yeah, they're not Amish. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> they're not Amish. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right? they're, they're up. They're, this is what they do. Yeah. So anyway, so it's three teams. 
uh, three people on each team. So all of them they have an individual horse that they have to do. One mm-hmm. guy has to lasso it. Lasso the horse? Yes. Okay. Boom. The other guy has to get the horse down. All right. The other person has to have the, the, the seat, put it on the seat, put the seat on the horse, strap them in. Mm-hmm. Or not strap them in because they don't always get them strapped yeah. in. And then the other person. Because it's to a ride. competition. It's a competition. So, so you're all trying to go. Yeah, yeah. All right. Speed is more. S- speed is what is wins. More, yes, okay. But really, it's a wild horse. And if you get the wild horse, what they do is they get them in a the headlock and they bite the ear. When you bite the ear, it makes the horse freeze up. Oh, wow. I talked to them. Like, this is what they told me. This okay. is like a technique because right. I was like, yeah. what is going on yeah. out here? And so they get them on the horse and then they have to do around the barrel twice and you win. I still have yet to see a team get around the barrel twice because it's a wild horse. They got him around once and then they got bucked off. It was, I mean, this thing went on for like 12 minutes. It was great. It's wow. action. I got, I have to show you on my phone. Yeah. It was action packed. It was crazy. But that's the powwow. Um, they have big rides like a Ferris wheel and stuff, okay. like all that stuff comes in. It's, I mean, it's just a way to, for that whole community kind of get together and celebrate its own history. And uh, they do the jingle dances and all the other parts of it. And uh, it, it's really cool to see it and like, you know, you see the chiefs and, you know, some of the, the wild eldermen and, mm. and all the, the women there. And it's just a different, totally different community. And anything like when my wife moved to my hometown in high school, like she said she was from South Dakota and I understood she was from just come from an Indian reservation. But like until you see it, you don't really understand it. Yeah, because there, there's bias and, and, and perspectives that aren't. That's necessarily accurate. Yeah. Yes. But then there are some that are extremely accurate and they see all your expectations or thoughts. Yeah, man. The, the, the crazy thing is that you just don't realize how little opportunity there is. Mm. What do you mean by that? Man, there's, there's no jobs there. Like everything's so government funded and, and government dependent. Like all the houses there are pretty much built like Section 8 or income like through the government. Like mm. they have to have, there's no, there's no builders there. Mm-hmm. There's no lumber company. Like there's no, there's nothing there like that. They have one bank. They have like one subway. Every most of the places where they get food are like the kind of like the gas station. That's kind of like the whole mart, like the general mart, like you're talking about. And uh, and in the, in it's the military, nothing they healthy call, options. In it's the no, military, it's kind of like a, a commissary. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah that's, what, that's actually what it's called, the commissary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's uh, that's what I would say. It's it, that's all they really have. So it, it's it's weird when you see that as well. And just like for my wife to have the fortitude to like, she's like, I was always going to like do be out of there and like do something different because mm. that's just who she wants to be. But it's always had this mindset. But when I go back and see so many that don't have that mindset because the people around you, they're all the same and nobody's really doing too too much. So it's really hard to have a um, be able to do hopes and dreams when you don't see them on a day-to-day basis, I guess. So would you say based off what you've seen over the years that you've traveled back uh, with your wife, you've also seen how people can maybe, if I'm hearing it right, sometimes get caught in the in the day-to-day of, 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 of just kind of idle time? Uh, well, I would say, look, man, drugs and meth and all that stuff has ravaged that place a lot. Mm. And if anybody gets caught with anything in the house and because it's it's all federal, too, it's, mm. because it's on a reservation, it's not like normal police. It's not. It's through the reservations police. So mm. um, and it's just different. So because everything's so federally funded, if it, if a young kid is living with the grandmother, and the young kid that's 13, 14 gets caught with some kind of drugs and they come in and spray the walls and test for drugs. And if anything's in the house, they shut the whole house down and kick everybody out. Like that is what goes on there. And it's sad and it really affects like generations. And it's yeah. so tough, you know, because like we talked about earlier, it's like it's kids with kids. Yeah. So mm. it's just, uh, it, and you don't really see it until you see go there and you see everything that's so boarded up. And it's like, why ain't somebody at least trying to, fix that house or live in the house like well it's boarded up but they took it and then like it's just boarded up so mm. it's um it, it's different but it's not like these people i mean they have fun yeah. and they have like wild times and yeah. it's just it, when i go there and get to meet her side of the family it's just completely it's refreshing different. it is so refreshing i mean they laugh they joke 
They got all kinds of stories. They got their own little traditions. It's completely different than my traditions mm -hmm. as far as eating and partying and the way they all hang out and the way they talk about family and treat each other. It's just, uh, it's different, but it's, uh, it's love at the end of the day and still mm -hmm. family. Growing up for you, going to high school, obviously meeting your wife. What was the experience for you just living in Alabama, you know, and, and then eventually, you know, playing for Alabama, like everything so much of Alabama is Alabama, rightfully yeah. so, because Alabama is, is a juggernaut. Yep. Right. And you got the 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 legacy and the and the lineage, Bear Bryant and Alabama, and just what the what what the Crimson Tide means to that city, to that state, yep. just all around Alabama. And yet you didn't get out of it. You you jump right back into it, you know, going through high school. Because I know for me, uh -huh. man, I, I wanted to go to USC. Yeah. I wanted to go to UCLA. You know, I, I wanted to experience those places. Um, but, man. It wasn't. At the end of the day, as I got older, I realized I wanted to get out. Yeah. Like, I, I wanted to experience something else. Mm -hmm. And I also realized, like, I knew, I personally knew what I had experienced as a kid. If I did not, if I did not get out of L.A., what else was I going to do? That was just me. Yeah. Right? And the reason I say that, so I go backward. Because I was like, why, why, what was your experience that made you feel that way? Well, right? I mean, I, I you know, um, goodness gracious, just grew up, just grew up, man. We, I grew up. We weren't middle class, grew up poor, mm -hmm. right? Um, my mom is one of 13, right? Between my mom and me and then my kids, bro, it's uh, living. Just on my mom's side, it's 65 and up. So a big, that's a big family. It's a big family, man. I just I just remember what I experienced. And um, I, was at, I was playing at the... Utah was playing Ohio State two years ago, and I remember sitting there, and we went to a little mom and pop, little uh, a little taco stand right down the street from the from the team. That was uh, a Rose Bowl with and Jigba yes. and Ham, huh? Yep, yep. And we were sitting there. Uh, we were right down the street from uh, downtown. We were probably about two miles out, so it was just me and him, and we were sitting there eating. And uh, just to kind of go through. The experience, man. I was sitting there, and it was a Friday, three o'clock on a Friday, uh, New Year's Day. Right? You got the first. You Have got you ever been to the Rose Bowl besides that? No, that was it. Oh, it's the best backdrop. It is. It's, it, it, it's like my son went. My son ended up later that day or uh, day before. Uh huh. Uh, it was the day before the Rose Bowl. He goes and gets up at six in the morning, and takes the shuttle, and goes to the Rose Bowl. <laughs> I said, dog, I'm going to sleep. I'll meet you. I'll meet you at the game. <laughs> and so he had a blast, right? Yeah. He, he 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 had a blast. Well, so we're sitting there, and so we come in, we come in there, and first of all, he has one of my old bags. And so he got a little Louis Vuitton bag, and he got it in the front seat. And we we like four blocks from Figueroa, downtown LA. He just left it there? He left in the front seat. Oh my God. And so luckily. <laughs> I went back to the rental car and I was like, I put I put it in a trunk. Yep. And so we order our food, man. We sitting there eating, and he's just he just people watching. He watching. He watching the uh, uh, the 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 CRX come. That's 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 lowered. Mm -hmm. That got the that got the uh, got the pipes and it's loud and it's bumping music. Then you know he got you got regular. Regular cars, you got beat ups, yeah. you got beaters, you got uh, uh, hoop it's LA. All, all kinds of stuff. Then you got a Porsche Cayenne or yeah. a roll by, man. And, um, and you could just see there's families, you know, kids and parents and kids pushing other kids, pushing uh, uh, their kids in strollers. And you could just see the activity. The day before New Year's, on a Friday, uh, I don't remember the exact day, but you could just tell the busyness. Of LA. Yeah. And not the business of LA and Beverly Hills, but the business of LA in a normal area. Like that's not on the postcard. 
Yeah. That that's not um, Santa Monica Boulevard and 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 where people grind, where people work every single day, where they're working, and some of these folks don't even have bank accounts. They're they're at Nick's check cashing, you know, spending fifteen yeah. percent just so they can get their they they, checks yeah. back. And so we're sitting there, and and he's just looking around, and I could just see like it just moving, but I'm also remembering it and man what was so awesome so we go back so we go get our tickets and we get our um pre-game uh pass we get our you know our gear and yeah. all that stuff and so we driving back and i didn't stay at the team hotel because i just kind of wanted to have some time just me and him yep for sure so we stayed at a uh uh shout out to marriott we stayed at a different marriott yeah, um, shout out. yeah bonvoy me, uh marriott. member for marriott. uh for, for I'm 12 a bonvoy years member. yeah, shout out. yeah. Shout out. um and so um uh, Man, we sit, we're driving, and um, I said, you know, man, it's pretty cool. He goes, yeah, it is. I said, no, it's, it's a little bit more. And I said, man, it's really cool to see that I'm sitting here 30 years later. I'm sitting here going, I never would have thought that the life I've experienced thus far, that I'll be having a meal with my son. I never thought I'd get out of here. I held hopes and dreams. I never thought I'd get out of here and let alone be eating with my first bowl. Yeah. And not successful in what, you know, the, the, the Steve Smith persona, but successful in meaning like, I got all my, my senses, Yeah. right? I'm not, you know, paycheck to paycheck. I'm not, you know, I'm not doing what they say I should have been doing. Right. I'm not a statistic. You're not what you had seen around you. Yes. And man, he blew my mind with the response. He goes, Pop, I don't think I could have made it out of here. And he was just showing me that he recognizes and sees and later, we see why, Dad, I see why you were the way you were. Yeah, because of your life experience. Yes. And so just, and, and so for me, I'm real big on life experience. I can tell. I mean, you lit up when I start talking about the powwow. You're yeah. Like, Dude, I got it. Hold on, what is this? Yeah, because I, I, I'm interested because so many, so many fans love us. But then there's the, the 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 professional dislike of other fans who that you're not on my team, so I don't like you. Yeah, I get it. Right, and since you're not on my team, I don't like you. I think I'm going to minimize you. I'm going to think that you're the you're the worst player. You're yeah. dumb. You're this. You're that. And you know, and that's the part of our game that that when you don't root when he's not on your team, you don't root for him. And and also, and let's be honest. Yeah. When me and you were back in the day yeah we weren't like social media friends yeah. we, people don't like social media wasn't I, it I was instagram even, instagram was not the it way was it not was not even a thing yeah look i had facebook in college which was awesome let me tell you awesome you did not but no. i did it yeah. was the best thing i, I think ever myspace seen. had just started coming out so myspace was cool i, I never had myspace yeah. but i remember when facebook hit on university of alabama's campus for the first time and this is when you had to have an edu you could only. Yeah. I talk. had net zero internet. Yeah, you couldn't have Facebook when it first came out. You had to have an EDU. You had to be on your own campus. You could only talk to people in your own pod. Mm. It was it was it was big stuff happening. Yeah, yeah. Big so stuff. how I, I know a lot of guys that went to Alabama. All right, right, and they and they talk. So about, before it, yeah. How did I get to Alabama? I would say this. So yeah, how did you get to Alabama? Because I, I didn't. Why go, did you pick Alabama? Yeah, because. You went away, I stayed. So yeah. I never, um, so I didn't grow up an Alabama fan. My parents went to HBCU Alabama State in Montgomery. Oh. So I grew up going to Alabama State games like every weekend. Okay. So that was like the big thing. We like, you know, Turkey Day Classic, Magic City Classic. We got all the other games. Like, we there. And it's, so, it's no longer any Magic City Classic, right? Uh, it's still Magic City and Turkey Day. They still do it. Magic City is a... Uh, Gentlemen. Understandable. They call it Madison City because it's played in Birmingham. Okay. Yeah. There we go. 
just no, no, no. I could definitely see the connection. Mm-hmm. I got you, dog. This is in Birmingham. I got with you. I'm just, hey, I was, no, no, no. The people want to know. The people are thinking that. I was like, it's okay. It's yeah. all right. Yeah, you yeah. shouldn't just assume. It's yeah. all right. So, um, because we're not talking about the wings either. No, <laughs> the football game in Birmingham, Magic City. Got it. So, so I grew up Alabama State, and then when I got to going into my senior year, my brother had already he went and played at. Uh, he had committed to Troy, and he was playing at Troy. Okay. So he was there. When Troy was pretty good too, man. He uh, Demarcus o- Ware. Demarcus Ware was one of his teammates. Played defense on the same side. Yeah. OC Humanure was there too, oh. as well. So um, they had a couple really yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, Derek Ansley is a DB coach too now. That's or maybe maybe getting close to being a coordinator in the league now. Anyways, so my brother just committed to Troy. He was there. I go into my senior year. I'm getting recruited by all these different teams. I, I started playing quarterback. I was playing just DB. Mm. Senior year, I moved to quarterback, and I'm playing DB. So, really? Yeah, it was kind of balling. So, I would say so because you, you generally a corner does not just go to go no. to uh, to quarterback. Yeah. And were you completing passes or were y'all yeah, running? Yeah. A, I threw uh, four thousand, so I threw for like twelve hundred and something. Okay. I ran for like another eight hundred, nine hundred. Oh wow! But I had a running back that was like he got offers before me. His name Who's was Kelsey. Running? He didn't make it, man. He had the grades. But he was the mm. one that got started getting offers before me. Mm. Uh, so, um, but he was like 5'10", like 215. Toting the rock. Wow. Like toting the pill. But anyways. so That's uh, lightweight fat now. That don't translate when you get older. No, but. 215, 5'10", 5'9", in high school. Yeah, he's 5'10", 5'11". That's, that's, uh, that's, you, that's. But he you become was like adult, rocked up, though. Yeah, but if he stops, if he take a month off. But you should see him now. He's a barber and he's a uh, he's the preacher now. He's, he's so he chubby. No man, he's still like in shape. Like yeah. his whole family's like that though. Oh okay. His uh, whole family's like his big brother. Because you know, is. like that way. Now I get it. Like when that, I put the numbers together, I totally get it. That's like for me, I would say like I was because I lightweight like the uh, poke fun of people. Yeah. Um, that's the light ba- skin. He, he'd be a baby away from being fat. Because <laughs> you know when you we, we we like to call it uh, they ate the chicken. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like the ones that get a little bit bigger. The whole the high chicken. School, high, they ate the chicken. Yeah. <laughs> they ate the chicken, dog. They got, That's what it is. So, so it's fresh. It's, it's freshman 15, then it's just uh, you just, it's just it's just career th- 30, huh? Yeah, that's this is just what you're gonna do. Yeah. yeah, this is the decision that you've made. Yeah, just, I mean, sometimes it just creep up on you. Wake up, boom, I'm fat. Yeah. So, <laughs> I mean, for some, not me. Yeah. For so anyway, so. I just finish it up is that uh so my mom asked me to stay close because they like to go into all of our games okay so she asked me to stay close she's like every school in the states offers you i mean uh you got arkansas these some of these other teams are starting to try to reach out mm. for you like i prefer you stay in the state so i told her i would mm. so i I, st- I picked alabama over auburn and it's literally because three things number one alabama was nike at the time mm. auburn was russell athletic and i had uh, russell athletic in high school so I was russell like, athletic don't make shoes bro so I'm telling you. Continue. So, so this was that was yeah. one reason. That's, that was huge. That was Good a big, decision. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. usually it, DBs are dumb, but that was a great decision. I'm an eight, look, man, I was quarterbacking, dog. I, I, yeah. I got I got it all. Okay. All right. So Nike, number two, the colors were closer to mine in high school. My high school colors were like red or like like a dark maroon and like black and white. Mm. Okay. Alabama was just crimson and white. Yeah, yeah. Auburn's blue and orange. I just didn't know yeah. how I felt about the color combo. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Even though Auburn's closer, my hometown's closer to Auburn than it is Tuscaloosa. How how far? Uh, I'm probably like 50 minutes to oh. Auburn, uh-huh. and then I'm probably an hour and 15, hour and 20. To okay, Tuscaloosa. yeah, yeah, yeah. So relatively. Okay, yeah, yeah. That, those are those are real. When you talk about a family, yeah, going every week, yeah. Uh, where well, you got to go back every week, yeah, yeah. That that's that's all. You yeah. got to calculate all of them. Yeah. So that and then uh, the last reason my DB coach at Alabama I liked him a little bit more, Chris Thurman. Oh, okay. So that was my three. So I chose Alabama, and the rest is history. I mean, Alabama was not good when I was there. I mean, um, I had a great time. I'm I'm glad I didn't have Nick Saban because these kids, dude, it's like a grind. Mm. Like, you got to be full-blown committed to this process if you want to be good and successful at Alabama. And I get it. If you start, you play there, you're going to be there on Sundays. Now, how high you get drafted and what you do when you get there, that's still all on you. But in, So you were under Mike Shula, though. Yeah, I had Mike Shula. Yeah. Which, the funny thing, 
So before I had Mike Shuler, though, I had Dennis Franchoni. And before I had, and after I had Dennis Franchoni, I had Mike Price, who came from Washington State. Mm. And then Mike Price was there for three months, and then he got fired. And then that's when I got Mike Shuler. How did he? Three they months? said they said he was using the university credit card at the strip club down in Florida. I'm just telling you. That'll what the get story you said. fired. That it, man. He's trying to go to the Magic City Bowl. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> And so at the time, man, it was going to be the first time anybody was opening it up. It was a West Coast coach coming to the yeah, SEC. You thought. Mike Price. Sorry. Yeah, we thought. Mm -hmm. And then he was gone in three months. And so next you know, like, man, I thought we were going to be really good. And uh, then it was just things kind of got out of hand. And then we weren't good for like a year or so. My senior year, we were pretty good, though. Mm -hmm. um, so, and plus I balled. It was all good. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Then I get to New Orleans. Well, we just talk about Mike Shula. So. So Mike was your OC, or he maybe he was a quarterback. He was a quarterback coach. coach and OC. I actually like Mike. I love Coach Shula. I, I saw his whole family grow up. Like I, 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 I love Mike Shula. The part that I struggle with, I've always struggled with with coaches. I like them outside the ball, but on Sunday or whatever day we play, and you call the wrong play, man, that all goes out the window. I get it. I get it. Is like it I love my. I could text Mike right now. Hey man, how you doing? Man, it's great to see you, Vinny. Man, I didn't. He's so nice. So he's, nice. But so, he's just so call, nice. call the wrong game plan? Man, I can give two <sighs> fan bangles about your personal. Life. So, I just. So, <laughs> it's so funny because so he was my coach yeah. in, in college. And then, so at whatever year that was, whenever I hit you late in the end zone. Yeah, we got to talk about that. What? So, so that was the funniest thing because Coach Why Shula, did you? Hold Shula on. Was, why did you hit me? This is Bandit. He founded Underdog Fantasy so that humans who really love sports could play with their friends and win some big prizes. Tell your human to go to underdogfantasy.com today. Why did you hit me? Honestly? Yes. All right, so we were in- No, lie. Yeah. No, yeah, I want, actually, I want to hear the lie first. <laughs> tell me the lie on why you hit me. No, I would literally tell you this. I want to tell want, you what was going through my head. Okay, no, I want you to tell me the lie or why you hit me first. Why did no, you? Why did you? Honestly, hit me? honestly, no lie. Why did you hit me? Because I didn't. I ain't like you. And cool. I didn't even know you. Actually. Thank you. So it's really yes. hard to not. I don't like think Abraham a, Lincoln said, "I hate that man. I must get to know him better." <laughs> okay. All right. All right. So no, honestly though, I, we were in zero coverage, and so I'm covering Greg. Greg's just doing his runoff thing. Like yeah. he wasn't. Like you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like usual. Greg used to always, and I say this with all due respect, Greg, because I know you like to, I, well, all due respect. Greg used to always be like flopping, bro. Like, I like I'm, I would, it would bother me so bad. And he would get the call. Absolutely. And it was just like, yeah. like I, he grabbed my arm and jumped. I'm like, bro, how did he do that? Yeah. <laughs> got, a, got a flag on me. All right. Anyways. So. I will, I will to say though, <laughs> Greg is doing a fantastic job. He is doing amazing. Yeah. I love hearing his, uh, his thoughts and like, that's why I, I need to learn offense. I want to learn the language a little bit more. Anyways, I'm still learning that. it myself. Yeah, it's because as a wide receiver, we're not privy to the offensive meeting. And he, no, you guys just tell he has to know protection. Yes, and just that another, like, which is so beneficial. It's, it's huge. It's it's huge. It's, it's, it just it, helps you be so much more well rounded. Oh, absolutely. It's I, like me being a safety. Like I literally have to know what the D line's doing, where the linebackers are. Not and as I got, a corner. No, you don't. Less. Yeah. It doesn't matter. It matters less. The yeah. further away from the. It's weird. It's, it's, it is. Yeah. But anyway, so um, so we're in zero coverage. Greg's doing his runoff thing. And so I, and he kind of looks back and stops. And then I see that's when that, the That's when the throw to I, I, uh, Jabari, oh, Jabari Greer. Greer. Yes. yes. He made a fantastic you know, me him, catch. Me and him have the same, uh, had the same major. Really? Yeah, I didn't even know that. I didn't know that either. Yeah, my I age. just talked to Jabari. He was down in uh, New Orleans for Mardi Gras. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's doing yeah. well, man. That's good. Um, anyway, so... They catch the ball. I, I take off running. I'm like, oh, he doesn't see me. I did not see you. I know you did. So yeah. I freaking take off. I'm like, in my mind, I'm going to catch you. That's, that was impossible. It was totally impossible. But then, it wasn't impossible because I was too fast and you were too slow. It was impossible because we were running out of real estate. The end zone was right there. There's no doubt. Yeah. But I'm young and I'm like full of piss and vinegar. So Before you answer, uh -huh. I have to tell you this. What's that? I originally thought why you did it was because earlier in the game before that, what was the other safety? Not Kenny. Sharper. That was Sharper at the time. Malcolm Jenkins. It was no, Malcolm. It, it was Vilma. Okay, Vilma. I asked Vilma. I said, hey, 
does Hart he still have the uh, makeup on from in his hair from Halloween? Because when you took your helmet off, you had you were still young. You had all your grades, and I'm like, man, that boy, gray, he is he grown man, Grandpa Gray. And so I thought. That's why you hit me because you heard me say to Vilma oh, that I was old, older. No, yeah, no, I you... didn't even know that. Okay, so so cool. I got I got I like apologize. three. No, 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 it's all good. I mean, it's a good joke. Literally, I, I do a podcast with Peanut Tillman. We would love to have you on at some yeah. point. Um, Did he see that? He no, but he started asking people like, "Hey, what was the first time?" When you found out Roman Harper was like gray hair, like it was like the first time. Yeah. Like, what was everybody's like first experience when they see Roman? It like, was around Halloween, so I thought it was. See, and it was like oh, because I we thought... used to. I used to throw a Halloween party, <laughs> and I used to go all in on a Halloween party. Yeah. So like, I had no idea, bro. When I, I'm talking about like we dress up. I ran out. I love that. We dress up Halloween. Josh McCown was on the team. Used to be with. I love uh, Josh. He dressed up as a dog the bounty hunter. A uh, nice. Like I'm talking about had the the wig. Yeah, dog kind of got canceled now, but yeah, yeah, this is yeah. when he was hot still. Well, I mean it was Halloween too. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you, you, you can still be. But uh, it, I uh, mean $2. Sh- sh- uh, Sherrod Martin, he came as a uh, Sherrod Martin. He played at Troy? Yes. I knew yes. Troy. I knew Sherrod from college. Yeah. He was in my brother he used to hang out all the time. He uh, he dressed up as Marlon Wayne's from uh what's that? What's that show? Uh, from uh from uh, In Living Color. Yes, but he dressed up when he had the uh, super soaker. Oh. No, I can't remember that was. Uh, but he had to, like the hair was. Yeah. yeah. Oh, um, I know you're talking about. Okay, yeah. but anyways. Sorry. No, it's, it's all good. So I, I, and honestly, I just was like, man, because then I saw you kind of like hot dog. You started slowing down like yeah, the 10. The, the, I get it. You were really, right there. I get yes. it. Let me just tell you. Okay. So from my angle, I'm like, bro, I'm really going to catch him now. Oh. So like I was really running hard. I tried to pick it up faster. Uh-huh. And then you crossed. Yes. And then I was still running. I was like. So you committed. I was committed. I was like, fuck it. And I just hit you anyways. And then at that point, I thought see, you were going to be ready to fight me. I, so I, I was, was like, so I was like prepared for you to like charge me. In I my was, mind, I was like, bro, I gotta be so committed. I'm just gonna, I know he's gonna fight me. So I gotta be ready for but it. But see, I was committed to fighting you, but I also I don't know, it was one of the many times I got in trouble for something. So I was like, I can't, I don't know if I can or I should. Yeah, I thought you were. And then when everybody came, I was like. You were cool. I, yes. It totally shocked me. But, I thought it was over. So I was like, it's over. Okay, the, you saw me. But you then made the, eye contact. We're yes. good. And then you just walked off. You got so excited. But then Jake comes. Yeah. And he says he wants to get involved. So, all right. So here we go. So yes. this is what happened. Uh, so when you yeah, walk on, let's off, just, well, what happened was, yeah. yeah. So you you had two big linemen. I remember yes. it because I was the one that started it all. Yeah, yeah and I, I like yeah. it was my it was my fault. And so it, a lot of things happened right after. So Jordan Gross and then the um, the big the the black guy that was, was uh, we had several. Of them. No, no, no. The the bigger lineman. He was a guard. Um, oh, Travell Ward. Ward. There it is. Yeah. South he, Carolina. So they come right here and here. Jordan Gross is first one here on, yeah. on the scene. Gets me here a little bit. Warden's right here. The ref is in between, so I know they can't beat me up. Yeah. So I swing on Warden, bust him right there, right there in front of the ref. <laughs> like I did. I did. I did. I just swung, and, boom, right there. And you swung because you... I knew they couldn't beat me up. The ref was right there. But the, but ref, the ref's back was towards me. So he was looking at them. But the ref knows now you threw a punch. I mean, I sla- I mushed him, bro. It was like, I mean... They were on me. So you defending yourself? Yeah, a thousand percent. Two so you, guys. You were on standing one. your guard. I'm standing my guard. Okay. And I know you always the first one never really you gotta swing first if you're gonna swing. You Okay. The second one always gets, gets caught. You, you know that. Okay. So at this point, I'm like, uh, swing on this one. Boom. And then by that time, Malcolm had tried to come and yes. grab Jordan Gross. And then by that time, LaFell grabbed Malcolm. And then by that time, you I had, came, yeah, Malcolm. And then <laughs> that's when the cameras come down. And I felt bad. Cause like you guys are like you just bullied my man Malk, and then Malk goes down, and that's like what everybody remembers, and it was totally my fault, yeah. and I didn't get anything. The ref had me protected, <laughs> like the ref has me because I was the first culprit. So the ref has me like two to the side. Yeah, like you're right here. Yeah. So at this and you point, were, and you weren't trying to move. 
I was behind him. Well, yeah. I can't fight the ref. Yeah. I'd already hit Travel. Yeah. So like bombed already. I couldn't swing anymore. I was uh-huh. done. At this point, my swing limit, I'd hit you. Yeah. Swing limit. Yeah. I'm I'm out. You're, right? you're, you're looking, you're looking <laughs> at the withdrawals and you might be. <laughs> yeah. And like, yeah. so then I see just a whole big old ruckus. Then finally my teammates get there. Yeah. So the funny thing was, is that we get to the sideline. What a shot. So the next play, we actually ended up blocking the extra point. Yeah, we did. Yeah. I Malcolm, that. Malcolm blocked the extra point. Yeah. He was, he was, so he, so he picks up the ball and that was, you couldn't return it. He throws the ball down, spikes it, right? We get to the sideline. Everybody's kind of like, it's discombobulated. Just a little bit, just yeah. a little bit. Hey, let's settle in, let's settle down. We're going to be all right. And then all of a sudden, Sean comes over and Sean looks at, you know, the safeties are right by each other. And Sean looks there and is like, you guys need to settle the fuck down. You need to settle the F down. Calm down. And, uh, and he's like, oh, all right. And then he's like looking at Malcolm and Malcolm's like, you talking to me? He's like, yeah, I'm talking to you, Malcolm. You need to calm down. He's like, what? He's like, you spiked the ball. You could have got us a penalty. He's like, hold up, hold up, hold up. He's like, Roman hits a guy five yards in the end zone. And you coming over here telling me I need to calm down? He's like, yeah, dude, the spike. Don't be spiking the ball. He's like, Malcolm was like 38 hot. He like took his helmet, bro, stormed off. I'm like, and at this point, I'm sitting there like, I mean, all right, man, we got to play, man. Let's go. You know, like, it's all good. It's like what it is. And so we actually ended up winning the game. Yes, y'all did. Um, oh, my God. And it was crazy. I was just like, man. And Coach Shula comes up to me after the game. He's yeah. like, I'm like happy. I'm like, Coach, man, good seeing you, da-da-da. Just talking a little bit. And he was just like, man, you know, good seeing you, Roman. We hadn't really seen each other that much since college and this, that, and the other. And he was like. Why'd you hit Steve like that? Like, what were you doing? Yeah. Like, you're just too nice and too, that's not you, Roman. Yeah. I was like, coach, man, like, I don't know, man. Honestly, I was, I told him, I was like, I, I don't know, man. I just did it. And like, I was just, I committed. Like, like I told you, I really, you that's know, really why I just committed. After to that, it. it was like, it was, no, it was like a real rivalry. People it was really, all they did and not. popping <laughs> after like, that. Like, it was no more. There was no more Mr. Nice Guy. No more. I it know. was like, let's go. It was. And so it's funny because then at that point, you were like really searching and trying to like get after me. Absolutely. And, and not only that, but like the rest of the team was too. But it like ratcheted up the whole rivalry yeah. for a while. It was For like, a long time. Yeah, it didn't go away. No, it didn't. And so, and then, well, not until I signed here. Literally, the Carolina well, it, fans still did not like well, me. Well, it carried on when I went to Baltimore. It did. With uh with Kenny. Yes. So oh we, with them. Yeah, it oh, had nothing to do with it. You remember that? You, hey, yeah, you, so you we gotta made tell, them look really bad. So we gotta tell you the, we gotta tell a story. So and we also gotta put a cap on it, because me and Smitty, we had this like come in together part. Yeah. Uh my last year in New Orleans. Absolutely. And so it was uh, it, it, it was it was abnormal. I I thought first of all, I thought it was a trick. No, no, no. I, I was, uh, I didn't, I didn't trust you either. So, so, okay. so we were, we had agreed that we both were, we were both kind of like this. Yeah. So it was. So look, it had got to where like Smitty was trying to get me. I remember one time, cause we, if these guys were running Wildcat a lot one year, yeah, you I guys remember, won the yeah. division that year and you, D'Angelo would fake it to, to you. To Stewie. You no, know, he faked it to you. Okay. On a reverse action. And, and you wouldn't hit me. I did. Yeah. So we had to check. If they're going wildcat, we're going to safeties are coming off the edge. We're going to blitz it. We'll just leave the corners too high. If they throw it, they got us. Mm. So, but we're going to set a hard edge on the defense. Yeah, and y'all did play that. in the box. Yep. So, dude, they send you in motion to my side coming at me. I'm like, oh, bro. I told, I told myself, I said, if they run Steve Smith to my side, I'm coming to blitz. I'm going to freaking whack him and act like I thought he had the ball. And I was like, and he I'm was, and I'm jogging. Yeah, he was jogging across. I'm jogging. He mm-hmm. came across in the face like, oh, I'm just like, bro. And I came and Wham! shot at you. Boom, flipped him sideways. He was so mad. Yeah. Smitty was like, you mother. And I heard him. So I just got up and ran off like I didn't even hear him. Like I was just running and chasing the ball. He was so mad. But the, actually, you guys didn't fake it to you anymore the rest Mm-mm. of that game. No, we did not. <laughs> so it kind of worked, too. Like my coach was like, bro, I can't believe you did that, but it it worked. Actually, it didn't. I it, well, it worked. For <laughs> you, you guys won that game, I, I believe. It worked, but I said I'm not doing that no more. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, 
<laughs> if y'all think I'm going to run that play, it's not going to go well. <laughs> I don't blame you. But after all of that being said and done, um, the the time we kind of hashed it all out, yeah, yeah. it was, uh, I heard you, Smitty was calling my name before the game. I heard like Harper, Harper, and I'm like, there's nobody I know on that side that's like calling my name. And then I turned around and it was you. And uh, I was like, I know he's not talking to me. And he was like, no, nah, come on. Then you brought me over and uh, you said, hey, look, we're going to play hard, but, you know, don't be trying to like go after knees, do nothing crazy, dirty. I'll make sure we keep it up and square and clean. And we're just going to go at each other and be complete. Like, cool, and complete. You tell your guys, I tell mine. I'm like, deal. And that was the end of it. And yeah. after that, it was just it's just respect and game. But here's the funny part. Right before my career ended in Carolina, we had to play you guys Thursday. I think it was like a – it was uh, – we had to play. That was when they started changing the the, 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 they the, the, schedule, the schedules mm -hmm. to where – they guessed who would be kind of needing to beat each other. Yeah, the flex games. Yeah, the flex games. And so we played you guys uh, in a late game, and we run this little rub action, um, pause, and it was me and LaFell. It's a good call. And we, you know, just run the, you know, it's double action. And so we run it, and they're not even throwing it to us, and Kenny just comes and blows me <laughs> up, bro. <laughs> Kenny's a wild bull, bro. Like, yeah. I, it, it, like oh, I'm talking about he blows me up. I'm like, I looked for the ball. That's how hard he hit me. Because it was like, what? And so I'm like, and he goes, yeah, you, you thought we was playing out here? And I said, huh. I said, you know we play you in two weeks. You know that, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. I said, all right. I'm going to kill you. That's all I said, and I walked off. Right? Yeah. Okay. So, and I had to play the little skinny corner 28. Was, uh, Keenan. Oh, Keenan. my gosh. He was so aggravating, but he, he challenged me in a great way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Because I so wanted to body Keenan slam Lewis. him. Keenan Lewis. He from yes. the Louis. Oh, I so Louis. wanted to body slam him so much. But he was so light, but he was just like, yeah, yeah. just always active, right? <laughs> always active hands. And um, so we're playing, and I catch a big pass over the top. And then we run some play, and Vaccaro gets caught up in the pile. And I'm like, oh, man. I said, are you okay? He says, oh, I think I broke my ankle. I go, shut up. Nobody cares. <laughs> and you should have saw his face. He was like, <laughs> now I said something a little bit more colorful. And he was like, and it just started from there. Right? So. Fast forward, I'm released. I go to Baltimore. You made him look bad on, like, national TV. We went to Baltimore. It was a Monday night football. I go to Baltimore. We come to New Orleans. We had a meeting. We have receivers, you know, because uh, I played against New Orleans a lot. Yeah, you did. You did. They were like, hey, Steve, the wide receiver, the wide receiver meeting, uh, Bobby Ingram, Former wide receiver, played with Seattle. Yeah. Played at Penn State, played yeah, yeah, in Chicago. Yeah. He was number he was, 81 in Seattle. Yeah, he was wide receivers coach. And so, man, him, uh, he was like, hey, when you know a guy, I want you to lead the room. Right? And so, who really started my TV career was Tory Smith. Okay. Tory says, first of all, before you start talking, Steve, do not tell us how this guy sucks. This guy isn't very good. Yeah. Give us detail of why he is or is not who. He is. Okay. Don't just say he sucks. And I was like, That's a good point. I was like, okay. And so after I presented, he goes, Bro, I think you do TV. <laughs> and so I was like, Oh, you know, I appreciate it. So we go, and I'm like, All right, this player is this, this player is that. Well, number 32? He mine. That's mine. <laughs> Don't touch him. That's mine. So I catch a little out on the sideline, and he tackles me. But when he tackles me, he could have tackled me great. He could have just grabbed my shoelace. It did not matter. <laughs> I was holding on to that grudge <laughs> that long. This is so good. And so uh, it's crazy. I didn't know. I just remember watching the game, because that's when I was in Carolina at yeah. that point. Yeah. And so, which you you destroyed us early in the year too, 
and uh, talk bad to everybody over there. I thought it was funny as hell. I, I actually I didn't talk it. bad to I didn't in the game. I wasn't talking, was I? I mean, you you kind of were. It's okay. It's okay. Like, I I didn't I didn't start talking till second touchdown. Yeah, yeah. But the first one, I didn't talk to anybody. No, no, no. Not at first. Not at first. Yeah. But then when it started getting ugly, yeah. you know what I'm saying? That's when you just start dragging. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I wasn't mad. It wasn't on me. It no. was, but it was like killing the corners, and I was just oh like, yeah, bro. Y'all y'all can keep calling this defense if y'all want, but we gonna keep getting it. <laughs> I mean, but I was new, so I was like, yeah. I wasn't the guy, so I. I so take take me through take me through that week and not like to blow my head in that because I was literally I went to dinner with which week uh, when, when our, I went to Carolina and we played Baltimore yes because I knew Ron I knew D'Angelo was D'Angelo was antagonist he he just antagonized everybody yep right and McDermott was a great dude McDermott's great coach uh, I feel and I just knew everybody over there and we had dinner it was uh, Jordan Gross I think it was Travell. And uh, Higgy, it was a, and then Ricky Pro. We all had dinner the night before that evening when y'all had got in. And he, uh, uh, Jordan asked me. He said, "Man, how's it gonna be tomorrow?" And I looked at him. I said, "Just like this, said, it's gonna be ugly." He goes, "I figured." <laughs> and so when you know, I said my hellos to everybody, and you know. Before the they kind of opened the stadium up and all that stuff. Yeah, you were very, you and I were very cordial. Yes, but once the once I put on that uniform and walked out, I honestly I feel like you treated me best out of all the DBs over there. Oh yeah, yeah. I was I, yeah. I was you showed the most respect and honor to me, and we was cool. And then in the rest, I, of but them, the rest of them, bro, they got. I had I had no regard. I get it, and look that. That team early in the year for the, the for the Carolina Panthers in 2014 was not the same by the end of the year. I mean, we won two games early, then we lost literally yeah. eight straight weeks. And so going through that was a lot. Like, I had never lost that much in New Orleans. Like, Sean Payton would have cut somebody. Mm -hmm. Something. Like, something got to change. Like, we're not just going to keep losing. Ron was just different. Mm -hmm. And uh, he handled it different, and eventually we worked that its way out, and it mm -hmm. still worked. Yeah. But uh, I learned like it's more than one way to skin a cat, honestly. But back to the original question, that Baltimore week, I mean, we knew you were going to try and like be a feature and like mm -hmm. all these other things. But honest to God, I, I think McDermott and them thought the corners could keep up with you, mm -hmm. and they got r roasted up. Mm -hmm. It was not even close. Case got ate up. Who else we had? Melvin, Melvin White. Melvin White got I ate like up. I like Melvin. I do too, but Melvin couldn't run with you past no. 40 yards, 35 that, yards. That ball, that ball correct. You know what I mean? Just, just even at 30, yeah. 30, 39, that wasn't Mel's 39 game. million Especially years as Mel old. got older, he yep. couldn't contain keep his weight super low. Yeah. It's going to happen. Josh came in and gave us a little bit of juice, but that's because Josh just believed he could do it. You yeah. know what I mean? I don't know why we just, just didn't play cover two and just played – like, that's what we would have did in New Orleans, but we were in McDermott's system, and he had to learn our defense. Well, what worked for us eventually. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's just what it was. You you had a great day. I thought it was funny uh, oh, yeah. that you just roasted everybody. And, like, it just looked bad as a Carolina Panther. It's just like, man, yeah. just another one. But it's like, kind of like the history of what's going on. I would even, you know, even this as close as, like, like right now, I got to honestly admit, bro, like, you're right. Everybody that tries to say I'm a Carolina Panther, great. You the first one to slap their hand. Say he is not. You can call him a lot of things, but a Carolina great is not one. I appreciate you always saying that. And right now, I don't even know if I'm a Carolina Panthers fan because I really wanted him to hire Steve Wilkes. Maybe I got a little too emotional. Mm -hmm, you did. And 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 like and it has nothing to do with Frank Wright. You know what I mean? Like Frank. It just Wright. has preference. Yeah. Because you know people. Like, yeah. I, I, you know I, what I mean? And so because of that, I'm like, man, I want them to earn my fandom back mm. a little bit. Like I want them to work for it. I'm not just all in right now. But see, the only thing though, I I I did a whole little devil's advocate only because I like Steve Wilkes. Yeah. I can I talk I talk to Steve Wilkes about a lot of different things. Our girls play volleyball. Yeah. So we have a lot of things coming out. And we were on the same team for years. Yeah. Right? For and sure. he's he's he is always around. We've run into each other at different volleyball events. Mm -hmm. So we had a ton of conversation and still have conversation to this day. I wanted Steve Wills to get the job as well. But I also, right, doing, uh, my, my tenure right now of, of doing television, yep. 
The one thing that I notice and I realize in television that I see in a lot of organizations is not everything you see is exactly what you see. Yeah. Like you can see it one way. And when you have an organization with all these different people, yep. you could take a set. Like if Steve Wills is a sandwich, right? A good sandwich. Pastrami on sourdough, lettuce, mayonnaise, uh-huh. some mustard. Yeah, all like, that. I'm t- some, good, some good kettle corn, ch- like some, just some good. Like I'm t- not a cheap sandwich. Like I'm talking about a, a I'll take some Himalayan salt popcorn. Yeah, actually, exactly. Just right? throwing all that out there. Bang. Salt. You can ask somebody to look at that sandwich, and there'll be 10 people say, man, that's gourmet. You get 10 people say, man, ain't no but peanut butter and jelly. Ain't no peanut butter and jelly on the plate. But that's what they see. Yeah. And I'm not saying that Steve Wilkes is a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying when you have enough different perspectives and views and life experiences, people are not going. You look at the Super Bowl. People will tweet about, oh, that was one of the worst Super Bowls ever. I thought it was great. I thought it was a fantastic Super Bowl. A Super Bowl that goes down to the last 10 seconds of the game? Oh, man. Really to a pass interference call. Yes. Like Before that, you didn't know who was going to win the game. Correct. And (laughs) even in the pass interference. Oh, you can't call that. You got to call something. Well, I will not defend him. I was going to defend him. But the moment he says, I held him, I'm like, I'm out of it. Yeah, he just told you he held him. Yes. So at this and, point, and, why would I say And I, I can that? tell you, a wide receiver would tell you, man, I pushed off. Yeah. If I get caught, I pushed off. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So at that point, I mean, it's the game. It just stinks because I, I thought, you know, that Super Bowl, honestly, I thought it was a great, fantastic game. It was entertaining. Yes. The commercials were good. I thought Rihanna was good. I learned that Rihanna's not afraid of heights. Kind of scary, but whatever. Not and afraid of heights and pregnant. And pregnant, yeah. yeah. Everybody was worried. They didn't know what she was going to wear. They didn't know, I'm not, I'm pregnant again. Yeah. So, congrats to her. And, um, what's it? Uh, anyways, doesn't matter. I think it's ASAP. Correct. It is. Um, but, anyways, um, I just, I, I loved it. I was rooting for Philly because of Jalen Hurts being a former Alabama player. Mm-hmm. And uh, and also, I like Philly fans sometimes when they're winning because they call everything John and like they're their own people. Oh yeah, it, they're, it, a, they're their own <laughs> type of fan. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's like, like but the thing I, I but they they look they get so mad at their teams and and then it's not this. But also, Philly's defense didn't show up. I never would have guessed mm. that that was how that that story was going to end. Was that Philly's defense didn't show up? Like maybe Jalen Hurts didn't play this way. Maybe. Patrick Mahomes just wasn't Superman, which what he was. Mm -hmm. And like maybe it was this, the ankle, the D-line got pressure. Not that the D-line and the defense was not even a factor. I know. And that Jalen Hurts balled out. He did. Philly balled out on offense. All their big players showed up on offense. The defense just didn't show up. So what do you think about uh, uh, Gardner? Minshew. No, no, not the backup. Uh, Oh. The corner that was... Oh, Gardner Johnson. Yeah, Gardner Johnson. Chauncey Gardner Johnson. What do you think about... C.D. Deuce. Is that what he's going by still? I don't know. Yeah. Uh, What do you think about him being New Orleans? Because I watched him in New Orleans, and he was always one of those players where his upside is fantastic. Yep. But when he gives up a play, you're kind of like, oh, no. So what, what did you think about his transformation from what he was in New Orleans, and what he is now, and the defensive presence that he has, uh, he transformed his game a little bit. Number one, he moved from nickel to a safety now. Okay. So that's number one. He's playing a totally different position, but he's he has that skill set. I think he's learned how to play it over time while getting a whole bunch of reps in New Orleans, but mainly focused at nickel. But when you're at practice and doing other things and learning from – you know, other veteran safeties like mm-hmm. Malcolm Jenkins. Marcus Williams made a lot of plays, too. Yeah. There. Shout out to Utah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was, second-round pick. I know he was. So, um, He's in Baltimore now. Yeah, I know, I know. Yeah. And so uh, Saints couldn't afford him. So anyway, so learning from those guys, kind of seeing what the right, the wrong, and all of a sudden going to Philly in their scheme with a really good D-line, uh, active linebackers, two really solid corners. Uh, it allowed him to go out there. He made a whole bunch of plays on the ball. And he still come up and smack you too. Yeah. And he he a little, you know what I mean? He's a Florida cat, man. You know, he's so a little that, off. 
Yeah, you know the, what I mean? way, the way you want him to be. The, yeah, off yeah, like yeah. where he's. Not, I don't want all straight arrows. Yeah, he's you not gonna. I mean? He's he's not gonna take a calculated risk. He's just gonna risk it all. Yeah, and but if it, but as long as I get consistency, I know yeah, what yeah. I got. Yeah. Like I, as long as I got this, the same thing all the time. Like they find him, but they re, they took back the fine because he hit the, the one running back in the in the Super Bowl. He smacked. Him. Yeah, I'm too t- hard. Yeah. And all of a sudden they find. But it was him. a form like, tackle. He didn't use it his helmet. No. He used his shoulder. He, that was. That's he's an NFL style. He tackle. saw ball, hit ball. Yeah, and so I, I think Chauncey's a, a really young, uh, good young player. Um, I think he will continue to evolve. It's going to be interesting because my only fear is is that if he's not all the way right off the field and taking care of his business all the time uh, and continue to try and be the best person he can off the field. Mm. Uh, that would be my only scare for him. It has mm. nothing to do with on the field talent because he's on field talent. He was a first round talent, mm. but he got drafted in the third round because of some other on question the marks. And then now he's been that first round talent on the field since he's gotten to the league. But it's it's concerns in some other areas. Why? Because the best players never leave your organization. The Saints weren't going to pay him. That's why they traded him. Philly eventually may have to pay him or somebody's going to pay him. He's a free agent now. Yeah, so yeah. somebody's going to pay him. So, and, But my only fear is money makes you more what you are. You've seen that. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? We've seen that across yeah. the league. Dudes get paid. They become more what they are. Uh, some like yourself, you're a steward of the community and all these other things. That's what you've done with your money. The more you've gotten and consumed, that's who you are. And uh, But some guys aren't that. Yeah. What do you say... Like, I, I, I never really, when I was a player, I, I never really understood the combine. Mm-hmm. Right? They talk about the combine. You, you read all these reports. They say, man, uh, less coaches are coming. and show, Less coaches are coming, and they're showing you why the combine uh, is pointless. I don't think the combine is pointless. I don't either. I, I, I do believe that for some people, right, that are seen at, at bigger schools, it's pointless for them because they have already been slotted. Yeah, you can only hurt yourself. Yes. But I do think the combine is a place where, you know, there are measurables that you can that you can exceed yeah. at the combine, whether it's uh, they fill in the blanks of what kind of character is this person? You know, can they read? Can they write? Can they yeah. count? And when I say read, I'm not talking about can they read this word. Sorry, I'm having a little... It's all right. Thank you. But can they read... Like, can they read the corner? Can they do, read the receiver? Are they able to read the football fundamentals of their job that most people don't even realize that goes on and these coaches and scouts get an opportunity to sit down with these players and hear how they articulate, yep. re- read their mannerisms to know, is this a person who has the capability of retaining information? Uh, do they look me in the eye? That matters. How do they speak? Right? What are they, you know, what, you, what, how do they light up when they're talking about a subject or an area that really interests them? Mm-hmm. Right? Because you can learn, like, I, I was playing with a guy, John Herschel. He was a lineman. We got well, you Baltimore. a lot at the combine. I mean, oh, hold on, no. This yeah. is a guy who was a lineman that ended up started teaching classes. And now as a professor at a cl- at, at, at a school, because what he was doing academically and going to NFL and his NFL career was less than, but because he was a I think he was a rocket scientist or like a a, a, a scientist <laughs> engineer an engineer that he was a football player that was really his side gig was football where really, he yeah. really wanted to do. It, was, was, books was his passion. Oh, books was his passion. Yeah, football was just paying the bills. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. But, <laughs> and he ended up he ended up being a, a a professor. Ended up going back to school, getting his master. It was unbelievable. But he would have never been able to blow up and have the opportunity without going into combine, going to NFL, because that's where they started to connect the dots. Yeah, that's where they started to realize who these individuals are because you can't always read a player like fans do read a player for that so many hours on the field based on a different opponent. And then they assume what it is. I, I agree. I, I, 
I actually enjoyed when I went to the combine. I mean, I had a hurt hamstring, so I didn't run or work out. Mm. Um, I did do bench, but that's it. And uh, it was, it felt like a, like a, a meat market. But yeah, just like you're there, you have no shirt on. It's like bright lights. You can't see out there. They can see you. They pull your arm, measure your hand, put you on the scale. You sit there. Then you go get checked out. Then you got to do all the workouts and stuff. I think I enjoy it, though, watching it is because you get to see all the same groupings, how they move, what do they look like, the different body types. And also, like you said, when you get to speak and you sit down with these these young men for that 10, 15 minutes on that card, that index card, and then you got to do the wonder lift. You got to do all these other things. It's really just who's the best of the best because you're really going to be investing whatever this decision is. You're investing in this next person. So I think you should try and get to know everything you could. Look, I thought it was crazy when I got to know the scout that scouted me out of New Orleans. Good friend of mine. And so he was like, look, we knew your apartment in college was the party apartment. Like everybody knew that. Like they knew you loved to hang out. He said, but one thing we didn't question was your love for football. Mm. You know what I mean? Like that was one thing that everybody said. Like you can't question his love for football. Like dude loves football. Like he's going to turn up. Like he's going to be partying, doing his thing and chasing and all that. But he's going to show up for you though. Mm. And so that's all they cared about. It was like, does he love football? Yeah. Okay. We're good. So I, I think those things matter. And I think the only way you know that is when you do these deep dives into the players you think you know. Then you just check the box. Like my DB coach when I first got to New Orleans, he was like, yeah, you're really skinny. You're like, I only, I got drafted at 193, 195. Mm. All right. But they're like, yeah, but I ain't worried about that though. Cause he's a physical player. And then he's like, man, look at the neck on that guy. Like, I think he can hit somebody too. Okay, cool. Check the box. We're good. Mm. So it, that's what it all is. Um, also your background, like those things matter. Yeah. Look, I, I get offended when Sean's like, I mean, Roman, like, he's like, dude, you are safe. I'm like, safe? Like, is that, is that the term I want to hear? <laughs> he's like, yeah, man. I mean, look, he's like, just think about it. All right. You went to Alabama. You play in a big conference. Like, all those checks. Like, does, like you, he, like the, the, does he have production? The, yes. the stage isn't going, you're not, yeah. you're not going to get yeah. stage fright. That, all those things. Like, yeah, he, know, he probably knows how to run a play. Like, uh, check, check. Dad was a coach. Check. Two so, parent home, dude. Check. You know what I mean, like. So, but so why do you think what you 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 mentioned it? So why is a two parent home? Why do you think that's being thrown around? Or you hear you've heard other coaches, right? Right. right. Talk yeah. Dion just that. talked about this too, yeah. very candidly and openly, and I I will too. It's just that these are things where you see characteristics and traits in young men and women that affect you because of your environment or your surroundings or the things that you've grown up around. Like that's just the truth. That's scientifically proven. And so two parent homes versus a, a young man that had his father in his life, whose father's had a job and was a coach and like checks a major box for some of these things that look, they want to invest in these young men. They want to draft me in the second round. They're like, dude, if we're going to draft him. We want to make sure he has a good, all these other things, the characteristics line up. Maybe he has a question like, maybe he's going to party some, but I know he loves ball and he has all these other traits. They check a lot of boxes. We're going with it. Mm. He's He checks a lot of boxes. He was safe. He wasn't like, uh, I know he may have some upside. I don't know. No, nah. check the box. Especially, Turn the name I think, in. I, you know, especially you don't think about it, but going to New Orleans. Yeah. Right. Going to a place like New Orleans where if you, if you can't fight off your own demon. Look. It was open 24-7 every night there. It was different when I got to Carolina. I looked around, I was like, man, Carolina, Charlotte's so freaking clean. Like, I didn't know New Orleans was so dirty until you come to a clean city. And I didn't know, like, it was different. You get used to it. Like, I just go buy a bottle of Crown because that's what I prefer to drink. You just go to the gas station. Just go to any state, any store. You don't have to go to a liquor store. Yeah. ABC? Yeah, ABC. <laughs> like, you don't have to do that. You... Just go buy it and and then you can drive with it and you can get you a drive through daiquiri and I can just pull up to a station like, hey, let me buy these drinks and then you just mm. go with it. Um, it's different in Louisiana. So, so what is, uh, how was your experience in Louisiana? Like, I loved it. The people there, the fans, the fans are like college fans. Yeah. Uh, I mean, and the thing that's so different about New Orleans is that you don't, people don't move to New Orleans 
for jobs. Like people there are usually from there, born and raised there. Mm. Um, there's no big business there besides oil and tourism. So those are the two big money makers. And so, and oil is mostly all the way out down at the bottom and other parts of New or Louisiana, not really New Orleans specifically. So it's just really unique to have the fans there. They're mostly all LSU fans and they love the Saints because they all have grown up loving the Saints. Their mm-hmm. parents love the Saints. They've been to all the games and their ticket holes are, they go, they show up and it's mm-hmm. a loud venue and we won a lot of games there. So I got to have fun. I didn't think I was, you know, I look back now, uh, you know, being honored there, going into their uh, Saints Hall of Fame and some other things. It's been really cool because I never figured mm-hmm. like that would be my life or my career, but it, uh, especially the way it ended there the first time, because I wasn't happy. I didn't want to be there. Um, and so... What's to, it, what does it look like for a player? Because everybody has their version of what it looks like when you don't want to be there. Like, so what What did it look like for you? What were you going through when you, you say, I don't want to be there? What, what was that like for you? Um, so my eighth year, you know, I'd won a Super Bowl there. I'd been to multiple Pro Bowls. I felt like I'd given everything to this organization since I've been there. And so uh, I've been there eight years and they draft Kenny Vaccaro. There's mm-hmm. nothing wrong with that. Kenny wasn't a threat to me, um, but he was a first round pick. They wanted him to play, of course. And so, uh, so going into that season, Rob Ryan is now the coach there. We are running like a three safety defense. And he was like, look, when we come in and play base, I'm gonna put Kenny in. And then when we're doing our normal starting three safety look, then you'll be in too. Uh oh. And I, so that didn't go well. Not only that, but Rob Ryan told me that, and not my own DB coach. So it, you already knew it was it was it, it was other stuff. Cause yeah. I, cause I'm like I, cause I talked to my DB coach and was like like if this was happening, like I wish you would have told, told me like give like, me hands up. Like hey man, you need to pick up your game. Like yeah. this other kids let me out know. playing. Yeah. So you're now thinking. Right now, take you inside the, the 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 head of a veteran. Yeah. When your when your position coach doesn't tell you. No. The defense coordinator <laughs> tells you. Right. And then let me guess. All of a sudden, when you make a mistake, you're getting coached harder by not the defense coordinator. No. By Sean Payton, the head coach. Yes. Other stuff. Yeah. Now now they open. Hold on. It, it comes to that. Yes. It came all the way full circle. That's what DB I'm coach talking about. Oh, oh, yeah. No, no, my DB coach is like, bro, I didn't even know that. When did they tell you this? I'm like, he told me yesterday. I didn't want to say nothing to you yesterday because we had a meeting or something. And I was like, I wanted to try to disrupt. Yeah. He was like, I, they ain't tell me because he was just coming from college. Mm. So he ain't even, he wasn't even hip to the whole game they, all the they, way they, yet. They, yeah, yeah. They, they, they leapfrogged him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he, 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 he woke, he woke, he woke <laughs> up on a Tuesday. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And got yeah. this information from me on Wednesday. <laughs> and like, hold up. Like, what's y'all really on third down? So, so, so <laughs> by this point, so at this point, I'm already hip to like, okay, so this is not, this is above you. This ain't got nothing to do. So, so it's above him. What's yeah. in your mind? What are you thinking? So I'm like, all right, I'm just gonna do what I'm gonna do. Mm-hmm. So, so all right, okay. So first, as, hold on, hold on. Okay. As you say, I I'm gonna do what I'm gonna do. Is that when you woke up the next morning, or is that on your way in, or is that when you walked in the building? Because you, I know, a vet, that, I know that a, night. Okay. That night, you went to sleep going, I right, yeah. How'd you wake up? I was like, okay, it's time to work. Uh, I'm but, about to, I'm about to go do my thing. So you walk, you wake up thinking, and already know. This is going to be difficult. It is going to be difficult. It, it, well, they don't want, already, I, they don't want me to succeed. Like, yes. They want a reason to let me go, too. They're they, limiting they, your ability to be successful. Yes, yes. And so, and I was still on my my big deal, So I don't, but I'd already played two years of it. So they so, already. So people don't understand, that's when, that's how the system yeah. minimizes your ability to make plays. Yeah. But it artificially makes the guy who's trying to take your job extremely successful. He yeah. has more opportunities. Yes. Not only that, but we were telling him what to do. Yes. Because we were lining him up all the time because yes. he's a young, young boy. So yeah. Which I, you I get, should be doing. Which I should. And yes. I, I, I totally did that. Yes. So game one, I get the game ball. Defense player of the game. Uh-oh. Game two, I ball again. But my knee 
was bothering me. Mm. And so I did something after the first game. The second week, I didn't even practice all week, but I played in the game. And I still played well. I had like six, seven tackles. I had a PBU. I jumped a, a, a arrow route too soon, and they threw it late. Anyways, I almost don't get a pick. I had read it right, mm. but he didn't throw it to me. That's just what happened. Yeah, sometimes they it's get happened. paid too. Yeah, they do. It, it happens. So anyways, after that game, I have knee surgery. So I missed eight weeks that year. Scope? Yep. Mm. So he had to come in, fix it up. Dr. Andrews had to come in, fix it up. I had to do... It was like jagged. So he said it was like this. So he had to smooth my bone down as a bone bruise. Mm. So he had to come in, fix it up. Gave me some man-made cartilage. I missed eight weeks, uh, nine weeks total. Come back. That same game where Kenny messed his ankle up, the week before was the first game I had just come back. I did not have a good game. But it's also Rob Ryan puts me in in two tight ends, and I'm a Sam linebacker position. And they double-team me like I'm going to take on a double-team block. Mm. And then they get a long run. And then they look at me like I'm the one that's messing up around yeah. here. I'm like, why am I in the game, bro? Yeah. Anyways, so that happens. Then the very next, so me and Sean have words. We call, he calls me into his meeting, his office. I tell him, like, look, he's like, your numbers are down. Like, you know, you used to be a creating piles. Now you're kind of just hovering over them. I'm like, look, number one, you guys got me playing back and you got me playing a different position. All right. I'm doing this and we're playing well. And I just got back off of knee surgery. I balled when I was, was early. And we had some words and some exchanges about this, that, and the other. And I just said, look, flat out, my DB coach didn't even know what happened. So clearly it came from up top. And so you think he's better than me. I have a different opinion of that. And he started to say, da, da, da. I was like, no, no, no. I'm asking you. You think he's better than you. Say it. You think he's better than me. He said, I do think he's better than you. And I said, I think you're wrong. And so I'm going to do what I got to do and finish out this year. And we're going to see what's up. And I walked out the office. That very next Sunday, Kenny broke his ankle. I'm back starting now full time. Mm. Like literally less than 10 days later, me and Sean have these words. This happens. Next thing you know, I'm back starting. I finished the season off strong. So as you're back starting, did you make Sean tell you? Uh, no, but it See, was. See, I would have been Captain Petty. I would have. The only thing that made me mad was that he tried to take credit for me playing better oh, after we had our talk. Oh, he was like, you know, I challenged you. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. And I was just like, I mean, bro, I'm trying to get my. I'm doing like my. I would have been thing. Captain Petty. I wouldn't. Have, <laughs> I wouldn't have came out. I would not have gone into practice without Sean talking to me. <laughs> that is Captain Petty. Yeah. No, nah, <laughs> he can talk to him. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah. I, I, I was, and I would. I told, didn't think about that. I would have told the. The, the D coordinator, the same way y'all told me that I wasn't playing, I need that same energy for me to play. Jazz hands. I love Jazz it. hands, I need I the same it. energy. I, I wish I'd have thought to yeah, do that. I'm Captain Petty. I like wish that. I'd have thought to do that, but I didn't. And so from there, um, I do respect Sean and much, and I'm great friends. We're good yeah. buds now. But I do respect him. At the end of the year, he called me and was like, look, I want to tell you, like, we're going to release you. And we talked, he was like, look, it doesn't happen that often in any organization, whether it's a player or a coach. Number one, let alone be together for eight years. All right, somebody, either coach is usually fired or the player is usually gone. Mm -hmm. You were part of my first draft class. You've been here eight years, everything. Like, I want to let you know, like, we're going in a different direction. Wow. And so I, for that part, I always respected him. Mm -hmm. And he said, you always have an open door here. Like, your family's been so great and wow. welcoming. So, uh, and so even when I went to Carolina, and we beat them and all these other stuff. It, it only really made us like more bitter rivalries. And yeah. now we just talk more shit to each other. Yeah. And uh, we got some stories to tell because he was talking trash when he was on the sideline. Like we were like 14 and 0 and he's talking trash like, oh, we going to beat you. And yeah. he's like yelling from the oh, sideline. Yeah. Me and him and he, used to go. He, he's that guy. Yes. He's like, that guy. Me and him used to go. He talks major Ass, cash money. Yes. Cash money. Like I was lying. He's up. crazy on the game. Yes, he's crazy. Like, I used to be lined up. Oh yeah, we gonna shut you down. I, look, <laughs> he woofing all the time. I, all the time. All the time. I, I remember it was one time we was, <laughs> we was playing, and I uh, I looked at him. And I said, "This is the dude y'all got coming to me today. This guy, <laughs> shut up." I was like, "Why don't you come out here and show him how you don't cover?" <laughs> right? He was he was always good. So I talked to him. A uh, lot of respect for him. Me too. Me too. Yeah, he's 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 ultra he's ultra competitive. Yet predictably consistent. Yeah, look, man, I, I think with Sean, like you just 
on game days, he's going to be hot. He's going to be crazy. But yeah. look, I've never had more fun with a head coach mm. at any point in my life than with Sean Payton. Like, he just, man, he just got it. at Like, coming to where when we first started, to where we ended up at, and to, like, see that whole evolution, even, like, going through and winning a championship together and, like, seeing what that did for everybody and what it did for that city and, and like, how much, like, that team just partied together, how that team – it's so special. We have such a unique bond, like that whole group of people and guys and that mm -hmm. whole locker room situation was what it was. So being a part of that is really something special that I always cherish. And like those relationships, you just you just can't emulate and you don't get them that often. And um, it, it was special. We won a lot. He talked a lot of trash. Mm -hmm. We had words. We've gotten arguments. Mm -hmm. We've cussed each other out. I've seen him cuss other people out. I've seen play, but like in the heat of the moment, man, it is what it is. And I think that's the best thing about a coach sometimes is you respect it and you understand what it is. What, how do you think he's going to do in Denver? I think he's going to do well. Why? Uh, why? Because I just know his offense is going to pop. Now, I think he has to figure, I think Denver is a fractured locker room right now. You think so? so? Yeah. I, 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 what I've seen, yes, too and much. Heard. Yeah, too much stuff has been heard out yeah. of the locker room. You know what I'm saying? You know, people. It's like too much. What like, I'm always best what, locker rooms, nothing gets out. What I'm always, I'm amazed at with this locker room with the Denver Broncos is all these stories <laughs> are coming out in this off season, and Russ keeps saying, "Oh, that's not the case." <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> yes, I, it, I, I think <laughs> Russ, if he came out and said, you know what, I played like dog dunk, like donkey doo doo last year, and I need to be better. That actually would be refreshing. It would be great. Like, yes. if he did that, that would go so far. Yeah, he can't. And so, because of that, I, I look at it, Smitty, we've been in great locker rooms. They're not fractured, nothing gets out. People fight, people argue, things happen, and it never hits anywhere. And the fact that, like, everything about this young man is out from his former times in Seattle to, man, he was trying to get rid of Pete Carroll and GM. I'm like, damn, how did that just get out? It's like to well, things I, in Denver, I think the locker room. I how think, does he have a couple of these parking spots? Like, all these you things. Know, you know why it happened? I believe it's happening. I believe. Is he a fraud? Is he? You asking me? Yeah. Um, I'm, here's why I'm not going to answer. Okay. You never know what people are going through mm -hmm. and, and and how much mileage they have in their shoes. True. And so for me to say, of course he is, because I've met him a number of times. And I've gotten the same Russ. They've it's, lost a playoff it's game. It's been great. And I'm like, amazing. Russ, how you doing? Man, I'm doing great. Yes. And I'm going, <laughs> amazing. you just lost last week. You can't. You, but, but that's him. That, that's you know, him. I agree. Because I there's agree. also some people that I know. That they just look at, you know, I go, man, this is an old football. And some people go, man, that's historic. That's nostalgic. This is a raggedy football that I can't use. And some people go, but yeah, but it looks great. So, you know, everybody sees things differently. Yeah. And I just think with, with Russ, it's like, he, one, he's in a position that is, is coveted, right? Yeah. It gets all the attention. And way overvalued. Way it's, overvalued. It's the most way overvalued. Qu quarter of a billion dollar value, <laughs> right? Way overvalued. But there's, there's, there's something to something because all these stories keep coming out about him. He has his own parking space. He, bro, the, I'm, Multiple. I, I, can, I cannot lie. I'm cool with having your own parking space. I'm, I'm great. I have my own parking space. I'm totally now, fine I with that. I didn't have a, a Did my own have parking space. But multiple. I no, I had one parking space. Don't park in my spot. Yeah, was, like, was, I totally that, respect that. That was my spot. That should come with time. That's yes. respectable. There's no doubt. But to have an office <laughs> that's on the second floor. Crazy. And to say my door is always open. He said that? Yeah, supposedly. Allegedly. I, I know, but the my fact that more and more yeah. allegedly It was a powwow out, session. It, man. Dog, you are one of us. What, why are we powwowing? Like... You know, we weren't average. If statistically, That's if we had scored over twenty-one points, we'd be nine and zero. What are we powwowing about? It, it's so all of that. With all of that being said, Sean has to get this kid, this dude, right. He's or, not a kid. He's a grown well, man. Well, he has to get Russ right. Is or is Russ done? Or Russ will. Well, I don't think he'll be done. Somebody will take another flyer on him, regardless. You think they will take that contract? 
No, no, no. They'll he'll get cut or something by then. That's a lot of money. I know. Clearly, Denver doesn't care. They just paid Sean twenty mil a year yeah. to coach. So, so clearly, we shouldn't worry about that. Mm. Um, so, but I think they're they're going to give it all. They're giving all the reins to Sean, mm. and Sean has to try and get it get him right. And if he can't fix him, because they got talent, they got wide receivers. No, they got. They no, don't they, think so. No, they don't have one. Okay. They got Cortland Sutton. Yeah. Cor- Cortland Sutton. Judy's not that good. He's a jag. All right. Just a guy. And then uh, Hamler just can run. Yeah. The guy that I think they're missing the most, Patrick. Um, can't even think of Patrick's last name right now. Which one? Uh, the defensive back? The receiver. The receiver. Yep. Uh, he's from Utah. He, he was uh, the receiver that got hurt. Huh? Yeah, Tim Patrick. Oh, Tim Patrick. They missed him. Okay. Like, I look at Judy and I just don't see. Now, I think he got one of the best coaches. Because when early in the season, uh, later in the season, when I heard that Sean Payton was up for that job, one of the first names that came to mind when I look at Jerry Judy in Sean Payton's offense, you know who he reminds me of? Who? Robert Meacham. Oh, okay. Meaning. I don't know if he can run like Meach, though. Meach had, like, deep speed. (laughs) Meaning this system will enhance. Yeah, whatever he has. Whatever he has. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's what I'm banking on, too. The only thing that's scary is that Russ has never been a guy that's – same thing as Ben, ben Roethlisberger without the Super Bowls, right? These guys aren't three steps in a the throw. They're not five steps, ball out. They're five steps, hitch up, oh, step to the right, oh, he's open, dime. Mm. You know what I mean? Russ has always kind of been that – Ad-lib. Ad-lib. Off schedule. Off schedule – Plays, he's, not like one, two, three, slam. But Sean is an on-schedule. He's an on-schedule offense, yes. So how does that off-schedule perfection and on-schedule perfection, how is that going to work? So Sean and, has and to not, figure not that not out because Sean has to be willing to, all right. Because not race-wise, but that's ebony and ivory, literally. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. Because yeah. on, off-schedule, on-schedule, they are polar opposites. A thousand percent. And, and you got to understand. And they're both successful in yes. doing it. Yes, but these offenses are built differently. Like the offenses that are used to having things on set off schedule, like it's kind of built into it. Yes. It's built into their bro- their blocking scheme. Yes. It's built into the route combinations yes. that next you know, oh, we're only getting three guys, but this guy, as he's coming over and sees this, he's going to break all the way back yeah. around. You know what I mean? They just, it's all caked into it. And so Sean's offense is not. Mm-hmm. It would be interesting to see what he builds off that. I do trust Sean. He's a great – look, I, I would be at practice every week, and we see the, the new creations and the plays that he would have designed. And this week, he's like, look, that's the thing I appreciate about Sean, too, as a coach, is that all right, on Wednesday, we get in, he's going to tell you exactly how we're going to win this game. All right? Mm-hmm. This is exactly how it's going to happen. Defense, we're going to need you this week. Blah, 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 da, da, da. Hey, offense, no turnovers. A punt is not a bad thing. Like, he's going to be very – candid about that we get opportunities in red zone we got to capitalize defense we're going to need you this week another week could be like hey i got this dude's number like mm. defense you just hold him on a 32 it's a wrap i'm putting up 40. Mm. like and he's telling you that on wednesday if red zone game plan i love it this week we i might go five for five this is literally what sean says mm. and i've seen him do it so I don't doubt that part of it. Now, what would it look like without Drew, right? And he made it work with other quarterbacks. Teddy Bridgewater, yep. Jameis Winston had some yep. success. I mean, Taysom, Taysom Hill has an NFL career. Yeah. <laughs> so, exactly. so, so he can do these things. It will be interesting to see what it looks like in the orange and blue. What, what does New Orleans do with the uniqueness? Emphasis on uniqueness of Michael Thomas. Uh, that is a great word. <laughs> Words matter. That is a great word. Um, I don't know if Mike plays in New Orleans anymore, honestly. He hasn't played in the last couple of years for real. He's been not healthy. He has a big contract. And, you know, if you're unavailable, like, yeah. it's, it's, it's like, tough. it's inevitable. It, 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 if you're, I would say that if you're unavailable, it's inevitable. That in that, NFL's term, if you're not a quarterback, it, it, it justifies. Yeah. Whatever it, they want it, it just, to be. It justifies whatever they want it to be. So, whatever it wanted to be. So is he, is he, is he capable of going to a new team, 
with the injuries that he's sustained to be productive. Yes, of man, Mike is Mike's such a dog. He is such a dog. I, I never he was my last year there was his rookie year. And I remember losing a couple games and I'm just chilling, like whatever. And um Mike was so mad, frustrated, and just and I was just told, and I've seen him practice, like, dude, like is picking a fight with a scout team guy to to like make him go harder, to like make himself go harder. Mm. You know what I mean? And so not everybody has that bullish trait. Mm -hmm. And so I told him, I said, look, man, whatever that is, that dog in you, bro, like, don't ever lose that edge. Like that literally is what makes Michael Thomas who he is. With that being said, you must learn how to channel it as you get older and evolve. You have to evolve in this league if you want to stick around. Because anybody can be a flash in the pan guy, but it's more about longevity is when you start to earn the respect of the high ups. You know what I mean? Do you, do you think he's? Do you think his his game has evolved? So less about his game and more about the mentality. I okay. think I haven't I haven't seen him play enough the last two years to talk about his game mm. as much as his mental, his body, and the evolution of Michael Thomas. Because once they start paying you, they also want you to have some kind of leadership roles. Mm. You can't just like be the same dude and then be making all the bread too. Because like once they cut the check to you, you know what it's like. It's uh, you go from a high paid employee, yeah, right, or or entry level to when you get paid. Now you are required to almost be a supervisor. Yeah, they want you right. to lead the room. Yeah, they want you to be a leader in the room. Yeah, you're, you're regional director. Like yeah, th th things are expected. <laughs> yes, you're expected to be early. Yes, you're expected to stay late. Yes, you're expected to be a good be, example for yes. young guys. Yeah, be healthy. Yeah, and if you're not healthy, be d doing treatment. Yeah, yeah, or if you're not doing that. You got to be balling on Sundays. Yeah. You know what I mean? But and so, you can't do none of it and get the check. It don't happen. And expect. And be, and be mad if anything else is wrong. It, yeah. <laughs> that's not going to happen anywhere for anybody. Yeah. And you know that's the game. And we've seen guys be, be able to get away with it for so long. And then all of a sudden, the talent, threshold, injury, whichever that is, the value level for each player, depending on position, they're going to let you ride. If mm. Peyton Manning can get cut, anybody can get cut. Mm. Man, it's been good to chop it up with you. Man, man. I'm, I'm thrilled. I'm honored. We probably do this for hours. Yeah. I, I couldn't imagine if the cameras weren't here. Yeah. You know what I mean? I appreciate that, dog. Appreciate you, man. Me, man. Uh, but we, there's one thing, though. I got last question. All right. What are those? What, these what, are my, what do we have going on here? Can we, can we get a zoom in? What, so what? These are my duck boots. My yes. my my. Um, you, you, I call them like my all weathers, bro. Like I didn't you, know. Are you duck hunting? No, I've never been hunting. But like I just rock them because they like I can wear them in anything. I can get them dirty. Yeah. I can wear them. I can cut grass in them. I can. Did you cut the grass today? No, I'm going to though. Today. Today. Okay. In this outfit? Probably not. Okay. But I didn't know what vibe we was going with. Yeah. So and what, I seen you behind a desk. What vibe is this though? This is like, man, I'm from Alabama and just kind of like building, a, you know, building a what? Chicken just, coop? No, no, no. Just chilling, bro. Okay. Just at the house all day. Yeah. Okay. I got some. And I, I wore these the other day, so they were just by the door. So I just threw them on, <laughs> on the way out. I now I agree with that. <laughs> like do, they were yeah. right by the door. I, I am just, I I will have whatever I had the socks on though cuz I walk around in my sandals in the house. So I had the socks on already, but then the shoes I just threw them on. They were by the door on the way out. You still folding clothes? You know I fold clothes. It's very therapeutic for me. Really? That's I'm, that's my thing. Yeah. I do all laundry. I don't trust my wife to do laundry. We edit that out or keep it in. I mean I iron clothes too. So I iron clothes too, but I, do I edit that or keep it in? She won't watch. Keep it in. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you heard it. Thanks, Smitty. Appreciate you, bro. Thanks, dog. Appreciate it, man. All right. Cut to it. Let's get down to it. Cut to it.